I'm Kate, and I'm here at the Canadian Science Policy Conference with Anton Holland, President and CEO of Neva Incorporated, and I'm here to talk to him about science communications. So you've been working in science communications for over 30 years. In that time, what's one way in which we've improved in science communications? I think one of the big ways in which we've improved is being able to um, engage mm -hmm. stakeholders better with respect to uh, science communication. When we're able to engage people and groups and whole communities on, on science communication uh, in an upstream way, um, we develop a lot more opportunities for uh, them to be able to uh, understand the messages that we're providing. Um, and when they're part of the process and that they feel that they're part of the process, people are more apt to be receptive to the messages that are being provided and ultimately benefit from that information so they can make informed decisions. Right been hearing a lot at this conference about dialogues, not just providing information, but receiving it. Yeah, we don't want to be mm -hmm. talking at people. We want to have that dialogue. That's yeah. important. Yeah, great to see that. Now, what's one way in which we still need to improve? Yeah, one big way in which we need to improve, I think, is how we communicate about uh, risk and uncertainty, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it, it's a hard thing to do. Uh, you know, uncertainty in science comes from a lot of different sources. Mm -hmm. And when we talk to people about uncertainty in science, what can happen with some people mm -hmm. is that it may undermine the authoritativeness of the science that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, people feel that, well, if things are uncertain, it's because not enough effort has been put into that. Uh, in general, humans don't like uncertainty. Uh, we like to know what the outcome of something is going to be. So the risk with science communicators is, mm -hmm. because it's such a hard thing to do and, and we can make mistakes, that they avoid doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and when you do that, um, you create um, a situation where by not talking about uncertainty, you create a false sense of certainty. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. a big problem with that is that it can undermine trust mm -hmm. uh, once new information comes to light. Um, I really think a lot more research has to be done in how to better communicate about uncertainty mm -hmm. and risk to people. Um, and that's ongoing. Um, but I think a first step is just confront confronting the problem head on and, uh, and just actually doing it and, and, and seeing how well you can. Yeah. When you talk about undermining trust, that's another big theme I've heard at the conference is the importance of trust in science and scientists. Yeah, it's always been important. Mm -hmm. But I, I think now you know, we're seeing as an emerging issue um, uh, more erosion of mm -hmm. trust in science. Uh, based on things like misinformation and and the rise of populism in you know in in, in uh, internationally and that kind of mm -hmm. thing, uh, so that erosion of trust is becoming a much bigger issue. Mm -hmm. So let's you know uh, create a situation where we we minimize the the opportunities for that to be happening. Yeah, fantastic. In your panel yesterday, you talked about a couple of examples of science communications projects. Mm -hmm. Would you share with us now one example of a project you found really interesting? Yeah. Well, over the last year, um, we worked with uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada to develop uh, the Canada Oceans Now Atlantic Ecosystems Report. Um, and this was a really interesting project because we got to be involved in it from a lot of different angles. So, you know, at first we, uh, we met with a large group of DFO scientists in Moncton uh, and we had a symposium with them over a couple of days where they presented their, their research and monitoring uh, results to us and we were able to work with them on determining what the key messages uh, needed to be for the report. And then, of course, once they submitted their giant science report to us, um, we used that as the basis to write a very concise uh, yet comprehensive, you know, 30-page plain language summary of that research in a really compare, uh, compelling way that uh, uh, really uh, told a, a really interesting narrative. And then uh, we are also able to work on a lot of the uh, data visualization products, which are key to helping people understand the complex data behind a lot of this stuff. Um, and then we also were able to extend interest uh, of the report by developing a wide range of really, really cool and a very attractive info infographics um, that really compartmentalized um, a number of uh, key issues and, and told a great story in and of themselves. Um, and of course, that was uh, able to extend interest across all the social media platforms. And then in the end, I mean, this, this report really was part of the wider climate change conversation, but from a very, very Canadian perspective, right? It's great to have Canadian perspective on that issue. Yeah, absolutely. Now, at the end of your panel, uh, you'd introduced wanting to develop a community standard of practice for science communication. Could you tell us a bit more about that, what it means? 
Yeah, um, so I, I, I made the bold proposal of establishing mm -hmm. a community of practice for science com communication because I think as um, amateur and professional science communicators, we really need a place where we can um, discuss issues, uh, develop solutions, mm -hmm. come up with tools that we can all use on an ongoing basis. You know, I go to a lot of conferences where mm -hmm. science communication is uh, mentioned and talked about in sessions. And the same questions keep coming up, mm -hmm. uh, the same issues, the same problems. And the discussion always seems to be from, uh, we go back to first principles on how to solve those problems. Mm -hmm. And we never seem to be able to get out of the gate mm -hmm. to advance that in any way um, because we're not connected and there's no mm -hmm. coordination there. Uh, so per perhaps by having a place where we can have those discussions uh, um, among you know, all of the groups involved in science communication in Canada, we can really accelerate the pace at which we develop solutions and come up with ways we that we can implement them. You know, and there's all sorts of great partners who can be part mm -hmm. of it. I'm thinking, you know, first off, of the Science Writers and communication Communicators of Canada, uh, but there's all sorts of uh, s much smaller uh, local and regional groups that would really benefit from being connected to a larger network. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really think the time is right for this, and I think uh, the Canadian Science Policy Centre is a good home for it. Yeah. Speaking of the Canadian Science Policy Centre, uh, we've noticed that you have been at CSPC, the Canadian Science Policy Conference, uh, for several years now, and I'd love to hear what keeps bringing you back. Yeah, well, we started coming in 2008, so uh, we've been there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, Canadian Science Policy Conference is just a really an amazing meeting place for people who are engaged in the endeavors that we're interested in, right? Advancing science policy and, of course, finding better ways to communicate science to uh, a wide range of audiences. So it's, it's really just a great, great place for that, and I think uh, CSBC Conference is the place to be. Fantastic. Well, we love to have you here. Uh, thank you so much for talking with us today about science communication. And if people are interested in hearing more about your work, uh, or about this new community standard of practice, uh, where should they be looking? Well, one place to look, I guess, is, is our is our website. So mm -hmm. that's www.niva.com. That's mm -hmm. N-I-V-A. Um, as for the uh, community of practice mm -hmm. thing, I, I would imagine if uh, this does uh, take hold, then there'll be some discussion uh, in with respect to CSBC uh, mm -hmm. uh, forums, newsletters, whatever. So uh, look to that for any developments there. We'll see how it goes. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you so much.